So last month I had the opportunity to go to Copenhagen, Denmark, which is a very nice place. Don't go see the Little Mermaid unless you're a little girl or you have a little girl. But do go see the Castellet, which is right by the Little Mermaid, which is one of the best preserved star fortresses from the 16th century in Europe. It's pretty cool. So, uh, but the main thing you want to go see is the War Museum. Cannons. Lots of cannons, which I like a lot. It's, uh, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, so here's the Hall of Cannons. They have armor up to, uh, the Afghan War. Uh, it's really a good collection. Surprising, they have Tsarist uniforms that won't end up there somehow. And just a lot of really cool military hardware, which brings us to the theme of this. The Farpanzer in the Hall of Cannons, which I spent a lot of time in because I like my cannons. I saw this thing in the background there, and I had never seen anything like it. I did not know what it was, and it was labeled Farpanzer. I have a better walk around later in the video that you can skip ahead to if you don't want my other nonsense, but... Basically, the thing looks like a steampunk tank. Uh, I didn't know anything about it, so I did a little research. It was made by the Grusen Company in 1892, an armored turret, and I had some fantasies about exactly what this thing was. This Grusen company made armored turrets primarily, and then they came up with the idea of a mobile armored turret. Told you there'd be some nonsense, so I've been messing with an animation program, and I got a Grusen company executive to talk to you about it. Then, I know the here and now or then. Pew. Thank you for coming back from the dead to speak with us. Yeah. My pleasure. Danke for digging me up, then. Can you tell us about the development of the Far Panzers? With happy. So Far Panzer is logical add on sale to product we had before ya. Armor plate, cannon and primary VA make turret for fort. Die Far Panzer makes sense given the preeminent place of fortification on the modern war field. Okay, yes, in the 1880s? That was the thinking. I see. Insolent. When we merge via die Krupvax. 92 I thinks. Oh my god. So much new customer. They had excellent sales and distribution network. V sell Schweitzer. Greek. Danes. Bulgarian. So many. Good time sense. But. I was taught that Panzer. Van Dy infantry troops attacked their fort. After bombardment, yeah. Die Farpanzer can move from shelters on smoke dem but good. The fixed defenses may be. You know kaput. So mobile firepower can fill any breach. Can you tell us about the Farpanzer's capabilities on the battlefield? Die Farpanzer. He said the bestest thing. Yeah. Die men are protect by armor plate. Stop bullets. 57mm cannon shoot any way all around. 30 shot amenity. Canisters or shell. Well VE have their option in all cannon. You and little. 37mm no problem. Big millimeter. Okay. Well, it certainly is impressive to look at. Yeah. How fast can it go and what is the range? Export model come standards via the gunner to take to fight place. Or mount on 60 centimeter rail so easy to get out of shelter. In combat. How fast? Range? Dumbkopf. It can go as fast and as far as die men push it. Ah crap. Really? 
Why? That you talk about. In battle. You won't. Horses. Nine. No good day killed so fast, ya. Yeah. Steam engine. You must be joke making. Too heavy. Tink the weight. All the time to stoke. VR. Um. We're a serious merchant arms production house. We. No. In a Jules Vernon. Storybook. Yeah. Fine. I'm from 1889. What you want? Nothing. That's all, thank you. Bitby grab Mitch Nick. So not exactly the steampunk tank that uh, I imagined. This is how they got to where they needed to fight if they were not emplaced in a fortification. If they were part of a fortification, they had, instead of the carriage, well, these could be the carriage wheels as well. This is a transport wagon. Uh, they had the 60 uh, centimeter rail and then they would be rolled out manually uh, after the bombardment uh, from a shelter, probably a better shelter than that, because they weren't uh, heavy turrets that could take uh, heavy artillery. They were more for stop stopping infantry troops who were assaulting a fortified position. They were sold widely in the end of the 19th century, early 20th century, and used in the Balkan Wars. And then they were still around in the First World War, so they wound up being used in trench works. Here's a Frenchman wondering what he's found there. They weren't that effective. You see uh, some confusion in what people post. Not all of them are far ponzers. Some of them are just Grusen Company turrets. Now we'll look inside. I've got a collection of pictures I took myself and that I found online. There's a mechanism in there to spin the turret and uh, elevate the gun. It looks very cramped. There was a crew of two and multiple cannons, as our guy said. Here's one of my pictures. There's actually ammunition boxes around where they sat. I'm not exactly sure how they fit in there. And then I'll give you my walk around finally and be quiet. This is from the mu museum in Copenhagen. Again, they use the, the Danes apparently wanted a smaller gun on there. That's a 37 millimeter gun. They crawled in the front and must have been very cramped, <laughs> but it was better than being outside and having to push this around if it was going to move. No, uh, I couldn't find any record of anyone who ever motorized these. Of course, it's interesting to think what would have happened if somebody would have had the idea of motorizing uh, a Farpanzer, but the need wasn't there. And when they did, the Germans did get a tank, they were a little late, and it was a big, heavy thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be back to my normal World War I type videos uh, very soon. I have a stick grenade video coming out soon, so click subscribe. Comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching.